Hi everyone, my name's Elizabeth, I'm a marine biologist and welcome back to another rock pooling vlog on this beautiful, gorgeous day. I have my octopus top on, I'm hoping for an octopus, I'm putting the vibes out there, I'm hoping the octopus sees me from afar and decides that it wants to come. Maybe not give me a hug, but like a high five would be great. I'm at Stonehaven today, um, it is absolutely stunning, it's only about 10 o'clock in the morning and it's already about 18, 19 degrees, which is perfect. I've got my wonderful bird hat on. Yes, I know it's a toucan, but I'm pretending it's a puffin. Um, so it's a puffin. This is the puffin shirt you're looking for. And we're just gonna have a good old fashioned rock pulling vlog today. I'm just gonna see, as try and find as many species as possible because it's been ages since I've had like a proper just search for sure and not having to go to the beach and like film a load of stuff. Let's going. Okay, jumping straight in with our first find under this very crusty looking rock that has such promise. It looks like so much lives on the bottom of here. And we found a very, very beautiful ragworm. Now I know that worms are not everyone's cup of tea, but look how colorful and gorgeous these can be. I really love that these worms are like super top predators. They have these really big pincery mouths that they can go and hunt stuff with. And they're just very beautiful and very cool, even though they are a worm. Next up is a really awesome find. I've only ever found three or four of these ever, and it is a sea hare. Now you might think I'd be telling you tons and tons of information about sea hare, but I'm gonna make you wait because something very weird happened this rock pooling trip. And to do it full justice, I have to describe it at the end of this video. So like stay tuned for the end because there is a lot more sea hare content coming. The rock pools at Stonehaven were filled with tons and tons of seaweed. It is summer, the sun is out, the seaweeds are doing good, but in particular, there's lots and lots of coral weed. And I actually think that this is a second species of coral weed. There's one called Coralina officinalis, which is like a raggedy type of one. But there's also one called Coralina elongata, and I think this is a much more regular feather kind of looking one. So I think it's that. I then moved off kind of down to where the actual sea is. You can start to see that the seaweed is now swaying. There's lots more little particles floating through the sea which is great for our friends the barnacles look at those little beauties now there's not too many out feeding at the moment they can actually f actively filter feed so they can actually waft the water themselves they don't need that fast current going past to feed so i'm wondering whether they're just waiting but what also likes this this kind of particles in the water are anemones and hydroids which this rock is absolutely covered in and when we find nice crusty hydroid covered rocks just like this one i mean come on it's just going to be something on there we find our good friends the nudie branks so long time subscribers to this channel will have suffered i mean thoroughly enjoyed every very 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 overly long uh, montage of uh, sea slug uh, video. It helps that sea slugs move quite slowly so when you do find one you can get a lot of content but also you don't find them that often and they look really cool so I'm sorry this is one of those times again you're just gonna have to sit through some awesome looking uh, sea slug action but this is a really cool very particularly alien looking one and it doesn't have a common name it's called Limancia clavigera I said that with confidence, no idea if that's how you pronounce the Latin. And look at it go, it's so cute, oh my goodness. Actually, the thing behind it you can kind of see is this little patches of grey with lots of like little circles in. These are bryozoans, they're actually tiny little animals that live all together in a colony. So they form about a crisp shaped circle with each of the little dots being an actual animal. And what it does is it actually feeds on this. A really good way to find sea slugs is to find their food. So I mentioned before that hydroids are good. Hydroids are always a solid bet for, for nudibranchs, but it turns out that this one actually likes to eat uh, eat this kind of bryozoan. Can you tell I've got a new nudibranch book and I'm using it to the full potential? So super, super happy to see this very colorful and very weird looking person, nudibranch. They're not people, Elizabeth. Anyway, <laughs> found the regulars too. Awesome starfish. Uh, these are sand mason worms. There's worms forming in those tubes and out of the end will be like a filter feeding kind of nice and intricate things. A lot like what you will see with this type of worm. This is a tube worm and that's doing the same filter feeding thing. Instead of making its tube out of sand, it's made its own kind of shell like tube. They're very sharp. They often scratch you if you're, you're doing some rock pooling. And this is lots of lovely ones of those living in some sponge. 
I spotted this fish just for a second and I'm really struggling to work out exactly what it is. So if anyone has an idea, please replay this section and let me know. My inkling is that it's a juvenile shore rockling, but I don't know. It had this like beautiful blue streak to it and just the way the anatomy is, it's got a long winding body, not a lot of kind of like, it's a lot of like head to the body ratio. So that's what I'm going with, but let me know if you know any different. I really didn't get any more footage. But it's also just lovely to watch the seaweeds in the sea. Sometimes when I go rock pooling, I don't actually go into like the sea part, I just stick to the rock pools. But the way that Stonehaven Shore is, there's quite a lot of section that you can get to, uh, like that's actually in the sea and has loads of rocks underneath too. This remains one of my favourite seaweeds. The ends glow iridescent blue, it's Condus crispus, or also known as Irish moss absolutely stunning especially when the sun hits it a lovely long-armed porcelain crab here they're often quite shy you find them on the bottom of beautiful rocks like this which is covered in a pink crustose coralline algae so the rock itself is not bright pink although that's pretty cool it's similar to that coral weed i mentioned earlier which is also growing on it but it forms and kind of grows along the surface and makes this gorgeous kind of bobbly pinkish pattern this is one of the most bobbliest ones i've i've kind of ever seen also a lovely little baby crab i i videoed this i was excited i def thought it was a definitely a different crab species after spending quite a while staring at all the different pictures of crabs well, it's difficult to tell with juveniles i think it's probably just a juvenile edible crab that's maybe got a bit more coloration in it having a lot of coloration in juvenile species juvenile individuals of crabs really helps because actually the adults still eat baby crabs so you're hiding from not only your parents but also everything else on the shore so now what you've all been waiting for something i can only describe as the invasion of sea hares honestly there were hundreds thousands hundreds of thousands down at the beach oh my goodness incredible moment <laughs> though i didn't expect it i showed it to my wife the sea is absolutely, this entire shore is absolutely chocker. And I use that in the best sense, chocker with sea hares. In fact, I'm getting slightly bored of them, which takes, that just shows you how many sea hares there are, because it takes a lot for me to get bored of the sea hares. Love them. Um, I'm sorry, I take that back. I'm not bored of them at all. I'm just, it's just more that I'm like, I thought I could go here and film every single sea hare that I found, and I can't, because I'm, it would take me all day. But I looked at this sea hare, and it was doing this like weird, like, thing like that and then I was like oh! and because it was like behind some Coralina which is a, a purpley pink seaweed it took me a second to see it and it was it was spewing out it's it has this like purple dye slime I was buzzing for days that I got this on camera I think this is so cool so this is a kind of defense reaction from this sea hare and what it does is it puts out this this molecule which is actually toxic it's dangerous to sea creatures it's made of hydrogen peroxide um not toxic to humans according to wikipedia i want to point out that i in no way intended for this to happen stressing this creature out was just a complete accident i just happened to move a bit of seaweed and um it i touched it as I moved the seaweed and it decided to do that uh, so I decided to cash it on film and I made sure to like rinse off um, in the sea not in like a tiny rock pool um, my camera so that hopefully that kind of toxic wasn't wasn't dispersed any further but I think this is such a cool way for a creature who is quite soft and slow to have this awesome defense mechanism against any predators or apparently puffing wearing cat rock poolers look look oh my goodness that's his little eye there now sea hares are really awesome they are actually not sea slugs even though they look very sluggy they have a secret shell hidden in the in the kind of the main body part uh, which means that they're not actually true sea slugs they're just uh sea snails that want to kind of disguise themselves as that fair play now, I pretty much guessed why there would be so many sea slugs all around at once, but finding this sea slug next to a load of eggs kind of sealed the deal, and so, uh, and so did this. <laughs> So 
So how sea hairs mate is there's a chemical release in the water that kind of lets all the sea hairs in the surrounding area know what's going on. And then they form these kind of chains or clumps and they're hermaphrodites, so they're both male and female. And what's cool is that they can mate with, with kind of one person in this clump and choose to be a male that then inserts sperm into the female. Uh, but then the female can then go mate with someone the next time and, and then decide to be male. They can swap and choose each time they meet a new partner kind of in this chain what they are and it's a great way to kind of I mean they're slugs they're not moving very fast when they all meet each other have the most maximum chance of successful kind of egg making now you might think Elizabeth it's a bit a bit rude isn't it disturbing sea hairs especially during such a private time um I would just like to point out and I'm going to show you they're just doing it out in the open they're literally everywhere they're everywhere mm, I don't feel them Just out, not under a rock, nothing. They're just there. I also just wanted to say that I try and do everything to not disturb sea creatures, especially when they're mating. So I did actually try and keep like a reasonable distance and I kind of just put the camera there and left them to it so they were undisturbed. They didn't seem phased whatsoever. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there that I wasn't going around actually bugging sea creatures while they were mating. Look at that. A thunderstorm. That's the only thing that will get me to come in when I'm rock calling. I'm livid. I think because uh, you are the only thing with metal around on a very low sea bit. So I'm going to have to get in. Look at the lovely blue sky, all of the coast to explore. Well, Zeus said, let the sea slugs have sex in peace. And with that, ending the video.